A warm welcome back to our Steam Machines. This is Jack from Conductive Music with a session exploring geology, music and coding entitled School of Rocks. This is Steam Corner and at the end of today's session you will have coded a virtual drum kit and virtual rock presentation. The coding we'll be using today is available on the link below, so give it a click on your tablet or computer to get yourself started. As ever, thanks very much to Arts Council England and our partners for making these sessions possible. So Steam Machines, this is the page that you're going to get when you click through to the Scratch program. Now the first thing we need to do is in this space here, we need to add our drum kit and we're going to do that very easily by going down here to our cat icon. Can you see there, choose a sprite? And the options here are, um, if you just scroll up, you've got choose a sprite, paint one, a surprise, or you can upload your own. And today we are going to actually use the ones that are pre-done in Scratch. So we're going to choose a sprite. So give that a click. So this is the long list of sprites that you can add to your programs and they're really useful and they're very cool but we only need a certain ones today. So can you see at the very top we have these options here. These are the different categories of sprite and rather helpfully if we click on music it will bring up all of the options here. Today we are going to be using drum, drum kit, drum cymbal, drum hi-hat and drum snare. So your first task is to import each of these uh, five uh, sprites into your program and then come back to us. Before we talk about each part of this drum kit separately, I need you to make an arrangement of it so it looks like the one I've done here on screen. So let me just run through what I've done. I've moved the hi-hats here, which is the double symbol to the far left. Next, we have our snare drum. Next, behind that, we have our toms and our kick or bass drum, the biggest drum there. Then we have our large floor tom, and then on the far right, we have our cymbal. If you just arrange it like that, I'm gonna to talk to you about what each one does. A drum kit consists of many separate elements of percussion. The bass or kick drum is the really large round drum that sits at the back of the kit. It's the lowest of all the drums, and you'll also see bands write their name on it occasionally. Then we have the snare drum, which sits horizontally in front of the player and has a sharp rattly sound. Our tom drums come in different sizes and we'll have a look at those later. The cymbals we're using, if they're single cymbals, would either be something like a splash or a ride cymbal. If you see two cymbals cuffed together like this, they're known as hi-hats and when they hit together they give a very dry sound and if they're left open they're left to, to shake and rattle. So a drum kit's not gonna be much use if we haven't got the sounds to go along with it, is it? So let's code now so that every time we click on our kit, we get the correct sounds. And this will work on the tablet as well if you press on it, okay? So we're gonna do that by going over to our sound menu. First, let's check which sprite we're talking about. So I wanna code this first. If you remember, I've just been saying the hi-hats, the two symbols cast together. So that is down here, it says hi-hat. So I'm gonna click on that. And then you can see a little blue uh, box forms around the hi-hat just to let you know that we're editing that. Then we're gonna go up here to sounds. We're gonna click on it. We're very lucky here because there's actually only one sound that it's given us. Um, some of the other instruments, as you'll see, will have more sounds. This makes it easier for us. Let's have a listen to the sound by clicking play here on this little button. Okay, as we said, do you remember a short percussive sound when the hi-hats are together? Sometimes though, when they're left open, they do continue the sound. So this is called a closed hi-hat sound. Let's have a listen. So we've got the sound correct now. Let's go back to our code and program it so that every time we click on it, we hear this sound. So back to our code section up here. So we need to head down to our sound menu. And what we're gonna do is just grab this one here, which says start sound hit symbol, drag it onto our code. And now we need something that's gonna start that. And if you remember, we said we're gonna click on it. So head over to events and grab this block here when this sprite is clicked and clip it above it. 
Now, if you want to run the code, you can just click here and you should hear it. Or hopefully when I go over here and click on the hi-hat, there we go. I've got a hi-hat set up. So each one of these has a different set of sounds. Your next challenge in the next few minutes is to go and code for each one of these kits so that you've got an array of sounds. And let me just bring up one of them that may cause you a bit of confusion, which is the drum kit here. Let's go into this one for a second and then you can see what I'm talking about. So let's choose a sound, go up to the sounds tab. Now, can you see we've got five different um, sounds on this. So because we're gonna use it with a kick drum, we're gonna need to find a, the lowest sound. And you can just audition them by clicking through. So I would probably use this first one, I guess. But because it's got two other drums on the top of it, you've got high tom and low tom. That's just in case you wanted to program those sounds as well. But for the time being, we can just use the bass drum sound. So have a go at programming your own drum and come back in a few minutes. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too tricky for you. Let's check our uh, drum kit over here by clicking on it. Perfect, so I have a sound assigned to each of these instruments. And our final section is gonna be quite cool. We've got a pre-made track, a pre-made rock track, because don't forget, we're all gonna be rock musicians today because it is the school of rocks. Um, if you click on this guitar here, it's gonna play the track, but there aren't any drums on the track. So let's have a little listen. If you want to stop it, you can just double click on it there and it'll just go off. So your next challenge is to practice using your virtual kit to play along with this. And I'm going to give you a very bad rendition of that, but I would like you to pause for a second and practice with this uh, track here and with your virtual kit. Okay, off you go. Okay, I've entered full screen mode up here by clicking on this button. Um, and I'm going to have a practice now with my rock track. So click on the guitar to start yourself off and let's have a listen. Okay, well, I don't think Metallica are going to be calling on my uh, services anytime soon, but hope you enjoyed coding that and playing along as well. Congratulations for building your virtual kit. Now click on the little blue button to go on to your next challenge. So as many of you probably will already have noticed, we have still got our drum kit on this section of it. So the first task is to get rid of it. And that's quite straightforward. Uh, just go over to um, your sprite menu. Find the sprites for the drum kit, which probably should be towards the bottom because they were the last things we did. Um, select it. And then if you go over to looks, you can click on this one down here, which is hide. And it should make those disappear. There you go. You need to repeat that for each of the drums. Okay, so we're ready to move on to our last section now. Our School of Rocks, we have Igneous, Sedimentary and Metamorphic. And this last one, we've given you an image of a caterpillar transforming into a butterfly because metamorphic rocks are formed under the ground when heat and or pressure um, apply to the rock and change it over a lot of often very long periods of time. So have, have a think about this. This caterpillar changing into the butterfly is a little bit like a metamorphic rock. Now also you'll notice that we've given you some pictures of rock here as well and they're actually incorrect and one of our last sections is going to be to uh, match these up with the correct type of rock. I'll tell you now that is not there, that's not a metamorphic rock, that's not a sedimentary rock and that's not an igneous rock. You have to move these round and these little panels will pull out for you. There we go. I just want to pull your attention to these little speakers on the side of our rock names, rock varieties. So. 
Um, the next challenge is going to be to code these speakers so that they play the right piece of rock information. So let's bring up this sprite on our menu. Let's use the Igneous one first. Let's click on him. And we're gonna navigate up to sounds here. So let's give that a click. Now, can you see there are four different types of rock information? Let's just have a listen. They're the same for each speaker, but we've got to pick the right one for our igneous rocks. So let's have a listen to the first one. These rocks are formed when very hot liquid rock formed under the earth cools down. Okay, and our second one? These rocks form from tiny particles of existing rock as pieces slowly weather and dissolve over time. Third one. These rocks may contain the most fossils, which are not the bones of a decayed animal. Okay, and our last one. These rocks form when either through heat or pressure or both, rocks chemically change. Okay, so we have our four pieces of rock information. Now I want you to pause it a second and I want to see if you can work out which of these rock informations relate to our speakers here next to our igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. If you're sure, what you can go and do then is go back into the code and make it so that if we click on the speakers, they play the right information. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will realise there are four pieces of information here, but only only three speakers so one of these speakers will have actually two things playing at the same time so if you think you can do that please go ahead and join us back in a second and I'll give you the correct combination okay how did you get on let's Good look at the one with two uh, different sound informations, which happens to be this one, the sedimentary rock. So let's go into the code. And when this sprite is clicked from our events list over here, play sound rock info two and then play sound rock info three. So let's just check that out. These rocks form from tiny particles of existing rock as pieces slowly weather and dissolve over time. Living materials and minerals can also form part of this rock. These rocks may contain the most fossils, which are not the bones of a decayed animal. Rather, they are the imprint of these bones as this type of rock forms. Igneous rocks don't have to form above the earth. They can form deep within the earth's surface. But we understand so much more about igneous rocks when we actually see the process in front of us happening, i.e. when a volcano erupts and the lava spews out onto the earth and the igneous rocks are formed. So next, let's code our volcano sprite so it looks like it's going to erupt. Your next challenge in the School of Rocks is to make it look like this volcano here, which is under our igneous rock. We're gonna make it look like it is uh, about, to, about to erupt. And we're gonna do that by using a little bit of code. Can you see here on the butterfly, I've made it shake back and forth. And that's because I've asked it to change the X value and the, what the computer understands in Scratch, the X value is the across, the horizontal uh, left or right of the screen. So what I've done is very quickly, I've just asked that um, to go back and forth. Let's quickly go into that code a second. I can show you what I mean. So here we go. Um, when green flag is clicked, change X by two. Wait 0.1 seconds, a very small amount of time, then change X by minus two. So the plus two pushes it across to uh, the right hand side, the minus two pushes it across to the left hand side, but we does it so quickly because it's only waiting for 0.1 of a second. And the other important thing to remember about this code is look, this bit, the forever block, it does it forever. So this butterfly will be forever going back and forth. And we're going to use this um, idea of changing the X value. So changing our left and right really quickly to make the volcano look like it's going to erupt. So let's go back over to the volcano code. So firstly, I'd like you to head over to control. And we're gonna use one of these repeat blocks here. And we're gonna clip that under um, where it says the last block in your code is go to X is minus 134 or Y is minus 92. Can you see that there? There's, there wasn't anything underneath it, but we're gonna clip a repeat block here. And we're gonna change the value in the repeat block to 20. So let's use that way of moving the character over, the sprite over. So we're gonna change X by uh, two, which we had before. And then we're gonna put in a weight block. 
which is over in control. But one second is going to be far too big. So we're going to say 0.01. There we go. And then I'm going to duplicate this. So that's other click or holding Alt or Option on your keyboard, depending on um, what sort of computer you've got. And if you're on a tablet, just hold down and then the separate menu will appear for you. And the other thing to notice here, so we've got two, this needs to be minus two because we don't want it to go off the screen. We want it to stay in one place and, and just shake. So tell you what, let's just have a look what that looks like now, just this last bit of the block. So. Let's do that. Let's put another weight block in there because we want it to think like it's, it's going to be erupting more. And then what we should do is let's make the second time a little bit stronger. So we can duplicate this. So other click or hold down if you're on a tablet. And let's duplicate. I'm going to put it underneath. But this time, let's make it 30 for the repeat. And let's change X by a slightly bigger number. Let's say three and minus three. So it looks like a bigger amount changing left to right. So it should look a bit more violent. Should we see what that looks like? Yeah, that's your first one. Wait, and then the second one. And there it does look a bit more aggressive, doesn't it? On that? Like, I think I'd be running away from it if I was there in real life. Now the next part is we want it to look like it's starting to spew it's liquid rock and the liquid rock is called lava. So if you go up here, can you see on the costumes tab, we have a, a different, a few different costumes. So if we click up here, I'm going to ask the computer to go between costume two and costume three. So let's look at them. Costume two and then costume three looks like uh, this is the fully erupted one, I think. But this I'm going to ask it to go between costume two and costume three. So let's go back to our code. Um, I'm going to move down a little bit so I can still see it. Now let's pull on another repeat block. And if you go up to looks, we've got our switch costume block there. But I don't want costume four. I'm going to ask it to go to costume two. So let's do that. And then let's put a weight block in of uh, 0.1 seconds. And then let's go back to switch costume to costume three. And let's put another weight block in there as well. Okay, two seconds. There we go. So repeat going through those costumes. I'm just going to separate this block off and see if we can see that. Okay, perfect. That looks really good. So let's add that underneath. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have a sound effect. So let's go over to our sound menu. And can you see start sound boom cloud? Let's put that one under there. That should be good. And then finally, we're going to switch to our final costume, which is the one where it's the lava is flowing out of the volcano soon to become igneous rock as it cools down. And then let's finally say that we'll wait a little bit, maybe five seconds or four seconds, and then we're going to switch it back to the first costume. So let's go back to costume number one, and then it's ready for us to do it again if we choose to do that. So let's read through all of this code to have a summary of that. So when this sprite is clicked, it switches back to costume one. Um, and then we it goes to this is just to place it on the um, on the screen. Then we have our first eruption by changing X so it shakes. We wait one second and we have our second eruption, which is a bit more violent because we make this X number bigger. And then we wait one second and then it switches to costume two and to three back and forth. And then finally we get our sound effect and then um, it changes back to costume. One. Okay, are you ready? Let's have a let's watch it now in action. Okay, that's the first one. Second one. I was thinking. <laughs> and there we've got our explosion. Okay, so have a go at coding that and join us back for the last part in just a second. To help our last section, let's talk about sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. The sedimentary rocks are formed from tiny particles of other rocks and sometimes living organic matter too, which means that when we investigate them, they're often in distinct bands or layers. 
Metamorphic rocks are rocks which have changed. They've transformed from one form to another using heat and or pressure, which often gives them distinct patterns and or colors. So let's use this information to help us put our pictures into the right place because at the moment they're in the wrong places. Can you use this information to find the correct position for them? Okay, so I full screened it for the last bit now. To help us with this, we have all of the clues that we already find out about our rocks during the previous sections. Um, but these pictures here are gonna be, need to be in the right places. So this picture here will have to be an igneous rock. This one here will have to be metamorphic rock and this one here will have to be sedimentary rock. So you can click on these first letters here. Can you see the red letters for clues? So let's have a, a think about sedimentary rock. In sedimentary rock, you can often see clear layers of sediment which run side to side through the rock. Okay, and I'm going to pause it now for a second. I just want to challenge you to see if you're able to put these pictures in the right place. If you are, you'll get a correct message. So come back for the solution in just a second. So our first clue was that sedimentary rocks were in layers of sediment. And obviously that's how things can, like fossils, can get trapped into them. So I think the one, if you want to see these pictures as well, if you click on them, they become a bit bigger. Can you see this clear layers of sediment there? And what about this one? Okay. And right, okay. So I think definitely the sedimentary is gonna be that one. Okay, what about metamorphic now? Let's have a clue. The appearance of metamorphic rock can vary with the heat and pressure often creating random patterns or in some cases, colors. Okay, well there's no colours on this one, but it seems to be quite random patterns, I think. So, I tell you what, let's move that one over to our metamorphic rock. You go. Can you see the, the patterns always like dancing then? Which means that this last one would have to be our igneous rock by default, wouldn't it? If these two are right, then this one would have to be igneous. So let's move him. There we go, and it's correct. I managed to do it. We've come to the end of the session today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you've had fun finding out all the different types of rocks. I just need to pull your attention to our Facebook page, our YouTube account, and our Twitch account. If you see conductive music on there, please click on that subscribe button. Also, if you head over to conductivemusic.uk, you will find over 60 one hour projects to get your teeth stuck into. So please use the link below for the subscription details. Our thanks ever to Arts Council England and our partners for their continuing support. Bye-bye.